I would say that you are now on a place where we have borrowed something from you to protect you. And we have taken great um, pain to be sure that you are protected. We also need you to know that this place should not be disturbed. And we want you to know that this is not a place for you to live in. You should stay away from this place and then you will be safe. now in this place where you should never come. We call it Onkelo. Onkelo means hiding place. In my time it is still unfinished, though work began in the 20th century when I was just a child. Work would be completed in the 22nd century, long after my death. Onkelo must last 100,000 years Nothing built by man has lasted even a tenth of that time span. But we consider ourselves a very potent civilization. If we succeed, Onkolo will most likely be the longest lasting remains of our civilization. If you sometime find to the future find this, what would it tell you about us? Once mankind started to use nuclear power to generate electricity, it was obvious that we will also generate some waste, which has to be treated so that it doesn't harm anybody. And uh, you can't make nuclear waste go away. You cannot make nuclear waste harmless. So several ways how to get rid of the waste were explored. Send it in the rocket out to the sun. It disappears. It will never, will never make harm to anyone. How to ensure that the rocket doesn't explode on the launching pad or sinking it to deep sea? We would never be able to, to claim that, that we can safely put something into the bottom of the oceans because still we, we have a, an impression that the, the oceans are really the, the mother of all life. It's not a safe way of handling spent nuclear fuel or radioactive waste. How much waste exists in the world today, totally? Uh, I'm not quite aware. Um, I would say between 200,000 and 
300,000 tons, somewhere between these two. We already have enormous amounts of nuclear waste all over the world. If this waste spills out into nature, it'll cause death and destruction. Large areas will become uninhabitable for a long, long time. Did that happen? Are there forbidden zones with no life in your time? A hundred years ago, just three human generations ago, when radiation was first discovered, we didn't understand that it was very dangerous, but we noticed that it can be useful, and we started to work with it. Radiation is a sort of energy which can penetrate deep into your body and harm your health. But it is an invisible danger. We have no sense for it. You cannot see it, feel it, or smell it and still it may even kill you. Radiation then can be described as small packages of energy and when they hit the, the genetic code, the DNA molecule, they can break it, split it. If you have a very, very serious whole body exposure, you don't feel anything until one hour or so afterwards where you start to feel nausea and you may vomit and you may think you have got a food poisoning. And in between you may feel better, but only after two weeks you start to bleed, you have diarrhea and fever. And if after a few weeks, you may even die from this. Radiation can also leave a trace in you. It can change the genes, mutate the genes. It will cause malformation or disease or dysfunction. So beware. Never stay in an area with an enhanced radiation level and never ever touch upon a strong radiation source. So we are storing the waste today above ground in water pools. The reason why it's kept in water pools is that water creates a shield for radiation. Radio 
keeping the waste in, in uh, tanks this is probably possible for the, the next 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, 1000 years. Uh, you, you just can't guarantee stable conditions above ground, for instance, for, uh, well, for, for 100 years, uh, let alone thousands of years. These storages, they need surveillance, they need power in order to cool uh, the water pools, they need maintenance. But we can't keep this waste forever in the water pools. There has been two world wars during the last 100 years. The world above ground uh, is, uh, is unstable. We have to find a permanent solution or a more safer solution in the long run. My civilization depends on energy as no civilization before us. Energy is the main currency for us. Is it the same for you? Does your way of life also depend on unlimited energy? What we must do is to take care of the waste from the nuclear power plants. I think that more and more societies in countries who are using nuclear power are realizing that they also have to do something. We obtain the energy, we have used the energy. Of course, it, 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 it's our, our mission to also take care of the waste. There is no way of doing nothing. This is something which ought to be the responsibility of all citizens, irrespective of whether they like nuclear power or not. Linking the issue of nuclear waste with nuclear power could easily divert attention from the material which we have and must somehow handle in a responsible way, not to harm future generations. Eikä tämä tunneli tuntuu joskus semmoiselta aikakapselilta. Eli kun sä lähet tonne tunnelin aamulla, joskus ennen talvea, niin saattaa olla ihan kesäkeli. Sitten kun tuut pintaan takaisin jonkun kuuden tunnin työpäivän jälkeen, niin saattaa olla lunta satano ihan pirusti. Eli yhtäkkiä onkin niin kelit vaihtunut ja tuntuu, että hetkinen kauas mä oon ollutkin täällä tunnelissa. Samoin saattaa olla sille, että sä menet töihin, tunneliin on pimeää. 
olet 12 tuntia tunnelissa, tulet takas, on pimeää, eikä tuntuu, että aika on ollut pysähdyksessä koko ajan. Final disposal of spent nuclear fuel hasn't been implemented anywhere so far. We are kind of a forerunners in this field. And we are dealing with very, very long uh, time frames, meaning that this repository should last at least 100,000 years. A hundred thousand years is beyond our understanding and imagination. Our history is so short in comparison. How is it with you? How far into the future will your way of life have consequences? That's what, you, what we really want to prove, that we can isolate the waste from human beings and, 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 other, and other life organisms for a hundred thousand years. We have come to a conclusion that the bedrock, the finished bedrock, 1.8 billion years old, is the medium that we can predict far to the future, at least 100,000 thousand years ahead. A very important fact factor for us is that the repository is self-contained. You shouldn't have to guard it in the future. It should just be able to, to, to be left. And that's a necessity because conditions on, on the ground will change. The conditions down in the rock will be stable and won't change, but on the surface you never know what's going to happen. It could be wars, uh, it could be an economic depression. At surface, the clock runs very fast, while in the rock it goes very, very slowly. Yeah, it's the most stable environment we know of. Olkiluoto in Eurojoki has been chosen as the site of the disposal facility for spent nuclear fuel. Onkalo. Where are you now on the plan? Should be here somewhere. And then we start widening this area. More and more and more bigger area comes. Mm. Like in a big cave or? Yeah, in a big cave. 
It's like a big city underground. repository acts like a cocoon, if you like, or a Russian doll, where you have uh, barriers which complement each other, so that if one barrier might fail, so other barriers still are able to mitigate all the consequences. disposal facility will be constructed in stages and decommissioned in the 2100s. When the entire tunnel is ready, a thick concrete closure is cast at the tunnel mouth. We will fill the chambers of Onkolo with the nuclear waste from Finland from just one little country in the north. After one century, we will seal Onkolo for all eternity, just like the tombs of the pharaohs and the pyramids were sealed thousands of years ago, never to be opened again. The safety of disposal shall not be dependent on any active uh, management, on active surveillance or, or any acts of human being to be safe. So it has to be fully passive. The repository will be closed down, will be backfilled. The idea of this backfilling is to return the conditions pretty much to those which prevailed before we excavated the town. There will be forests, there will be houses, hopefully there will still be, be people, people living, not perhaps exactly the same persons that were, were there from the beginning, but, but perhaps their children and grandchildren will still live and use the land. We always bring up the question of the Ice Age as a, some, some kind of a very um, dramatic change in the situation. And of course, it will have an impact. If we look at our um, assumptions, the scenarios, it will happen within 60,000 years from now. So everything disappears. Uh, 
disappears from here when the ice comes. Everything gets frozen, the vegetation will die, and then this will be more like a tundra. Would it be forgotten during an ice age? Yes, I think it would be, would be forgotten in such a case. If you were a person who were evaluating this concept from the outside, what would you be afraid of? Nothing. Once upon a time, Man learned to master fire, something no other living creature had done before him. Man conquered the entire world. One day he found a new fire, a fire so powerful that it could never be extinguished. Man reveled in the thought that he now possessed the powers of the universe. Then in horror he realized that his new fire could not only create, but also destroy. Not only could it burn on land, but inside all living creatures, inside his children, the animals, all crops. Man looked around for help, but found none. And so he built a burial chamber deep in the bowels of the earth, a hiding place for the fire to burn into eternity. You are now in the tunnel. This place is not a place of honor. No esteemed deeds are commemorated here. You should not have come here. You are heading towards a place where you should never go. What is there is dangerous and repulsive. The danger will still be present in your time as it is in ours. Please turn around and never come back. There is nothing here for you. Go no further. My personal belief is that no human intrusion will take place at, at any time scale ever. Recognize that this could happen, that you might find and open Onkelo. He referred to that as human intrusion. We don't want this to happen because you may get hurt. But most of all, we are afraid of human intrusion because if Onkelo is opened, the waste will no longer be isolated from all living organisms, and we will have failed. In fact, we consider you the main threat to the safety of Onkelo.
if someone in the future is able to dig down to the repository it, it will probably be a civilization of the same kind as we have presently and in such a case they will all also be knowledgeable to know that this is a radioactive material. Yeah, I think that's the most probable scenario, but I'm not so sure. It could be another situation. I think if someone found a facility like that in the future, they might uh, interpret it as something religious, a burial ground, or a treasure. If we look at the pyramids, uh, we cannot really say that we understand everything about the significance of their uh, erection. But um, we can uh, assume that this could be the same for our repository. It will be interpreted in the same way as we interpret the pyramids. There is no clear understanding and uh, we, it is quite possible that we will not be understood by the uh, future, especially by the distant future. What if someone finds a repository? How should they know what it is? Well, they, they should have some measuring tools to measure the radiation. What if they don't have that? Well, then they have to make a chemical analysis. <laughs> but what, if, what if they can't do that? Well, if they cannot do that, then they cannot do the drilling either. We can look back and look at ancient civilization and they have done remarkable things. And uh, we can just go back and look at the mining industry in, in Sweden and then they, uh, in the 16th century, they went down several hundred meters. We must realize that uh, the future scenarios are not just about uh, high tech or very low tech, like a stone age scenario. We have scenarios in the middle where people may drill but they may not understand, they may not have the uh, technology to understand what they meet. And the Roman Empire was born, lived, prospered and died. And similarly, also the West will go through the same kind of phases, being born, flourishing, developing, crumbling, and dying. What do we know about society in 300 years? Virtually impossible to say anything. We might expect society as we know it to exist for 50 years more or for 100 years. And if you are convinced of what will happen then, let's put the question on a 300 years, 500 years time, then the darkness thickens. We know that uh, the uh, society changes very fast. Could we imagine a society in the future where science and technology did not matter in the same way as it matters for us now? Well, that is, of course, entirely possible. They might go up in technology, they might go down. And uh, we don't really know. If we assume something in the future, uh, they could go back to the Neanderthal. 
I think that it's the changes that we will uh, like get insured for. The design and the construction and the implementation has to be done so that, uh, that no knowledge is necessary for the future. So that it can be safe also in that case that people would lost, have lost the knowledge. And we, we, we used to have, have a joke telling that, that when we, we, we start the digging, for the repository, the first thing we will experience is a copper canister. <laughs> oh, exactly the same, same kind of that, that we want to place ourselves. Of course, you would start to think, well, there must be a reason for this. You have the scenario of the hidden treasure. You have the idea that something is there and it is valuable and uh, you people would start to dig for it. You could even have the uh, scenario where people even know it is dangerous, uh, and, but it's also valuable at the same time. Could the waste also, in the future, have the value of gold or even more? Uh, well, d just to, to, to answer the question honestly, yes. Yes, it could. And it is a treasure. We must not... Uh, there's a lot of copper and also uranium, uh, a lot of plutonium that could be valuable. is unpredictable, of course, is uh, human behavior. That who knows why people might come and drill a hole. There must be a reason for someone to start to dig down to 500 meters in a just average ordinary rock. So what could prevent them from doing it? I wouldn't know. But could this reason be that, that the knowledge about what's there is incomplete? Of course it could, yes. What if there was a sign that said, don't drill here? Well, that might be a case for, uh, uh, let's say, for a certain period of time at least. What, what do you mean? Well, if you put a marker, they are called markers. So this is, an, this is a concept or a thought that... Exists. It's an idea which has been thought over that an area where a disposal has been made could be marked using markers. The obvious uh, marker is an object with text on, just like a rune stone. This is, I think, is a typical marker where you see 
that you have messages repeated in different United Nations languages, general information about the area, and you have more detailed information also. And that, in, in turn, is part of a whole market system where you, had, you might have uh, more uh, detailed information yet if you went to another place in that same site. There would be a message kiosk, for instance. It is a more detailed message than the one on the monolith. And then you could go, go further on and have messages uh, like a small library in carved rock, perhaps an underground. What would be the, the, the content of the information? To uh, say that this is not a, an important place, it is a place of danger, and stay away from the site and not disturbing the site. These were the main uh, messages. We will leave written information for you in all the major languages of our time. Will you understand any of them? Can you read? And that's, of course, an, uh, a mind-boggling scenario. How do you communicate? We won't speak the same language, and uh, uh, we won't have the same symbols. I guess we have to, to find something uh, very general. This is where the cartoon comes in, where you have uh, a low sophistication, but you have a, a robust message. This is a attempt to give you a feeling rather than give you a detailed message. Intuitively, you would expect people to react to something frightening better than to a detailed uh, message. Forbidding blocks, a landscape of thorn, landscapes that uh, would get you to feel that this is something which is wrong, this is something not inviting. When you opened Onkalu, did you see landscapes of thorn? Did it make you hesitate? Or maybe curious? What drove you to enter? Was it the scars we left on the surface? Or a rumor? In the terms of emotional information, uh, there was an interest in the uh, picture of Evert Munch, the scream, uh, to uh, portray something that was negative. It uh, shows uh, the feeling of despair, and uh, it's very clear to the observer that uh, this is not uh, something good. Uh, but do you think this will be clear at all ages, at all times? I think uh, it has a fair chance, uh, yes, I do. It's universal? I think it is universal for humans. We are not sure how to overcome the problem of leaving markers to warn you. Messages from long lost civilizations were found in our times but it took us many years to understand the language and the signs. Some we still cannot read. If it just puts something that is, is not completely understandable to the future people, that, and they suddenly just, they, they don't understand perhaps what it means, and then they just want to find out. People are curious. We can take uh, an example of uh, Norway that was found uh, lying down, face down, and uh, it has a requirement that no one should uh, move this. It should not be touched by misguided men. But of course, this warning uh, was not uh, supported by uh, archaeologists. They disregarded it completely. So this is, uh, this is a quite uh, probable fate also of a marker uh, for these distant futures.
And if you put those markers there, it's not clear that they understand the point that it's dangerous. And even if they understood, they still may want to know what it is. But then there's the philosophical point that some people think that it would be better to forget. Because then by chance it would be less likely that anybody would hit exactly the repository. It has been discussed to let the facility... Yes, I guess on. there are two schools here. Those who think that, you, yes, you have to leave markers, as they are usually called, on the ground. And those people who say that it would be better to walk away and, and, and forget about the site. Do you actually think that leaving markers creates a higher risk of intrusion? Well, uh, I would say so, yes. Personally, uh, I don't see the situation severe if the site would be forgotten over time. But how is it possible to make, to create oblivion and forgetting? How is it possible to make a facility like Onkalu disappear from... Well, you Boston? say, you say, it, it's not very, very easy. <laughs> uh. When the burial chamber was complete, man laid his new fire to rest and tried to forget about it, for he knew that only through oblivion would he be free from it. But then he started to worry that his children might find the burial chamber and awaken the fire from his sleep. So he bade his children to tell their children and their children's children too to remember forever to consign the burial chamber to oblivion, to remember forever, to forget. Some of the main principles included in, in legislation are, are firstly the limitation of burden, burdens on future generations, so we should not uh, impose undue burdens on future generations. Second principle is protection of future generations. That means that the safety level which should be uh, afforded for future generations should not be lower than we are enjoying currently. And then third principle is that we should pass information about the repository to future generations. Our law states that we must inform you about Unkalu. Maybe you will need to enter if we overlook something or if repairs are required. Were our calculations and assumptions accurate? 
Did we make mistakes? Is that why you are here? But the question about the knowledge transfer, what does the law say about that? It doesn't say that. I don't think it says anything yet. Are you sure about that? No. It is required in law that assessment is made over this time, but it's not popular with all, when many people react to it. Uh, they think it's um, uh, too ambitious. It requires that each generation will, will, will uh, let's say, look that system is adequate. So but yeah. but that, you, the legislation says that, mm -hmm. that Stuck should pass on the information. It doesn't talk yeah. about generations. Yeah, yeah. It says that it should uh, yeah, deposit the information in, in a permanent manner. So, so. In a permanent manner, that's the yes. exact phrasing. Yes, good. What do you think they mean by that? Yes, I think you should ask them. Because we've just talked about the problems of that. Permanent is too strong a word to be used here. And what about the people who work with these things? They get the uh, scientific disease, so to say. They are, it's, uh, it's all routine for them. They have a task. I don't really understand it, I think. No, I don't think anybody does. The responsibility is moved to the state after they, they have decided that this has been now done, done in an acceptable way. So the Finnish state is responsible for passing on information into the future? Yes, yes. Does that mean that when you deliver the information about the facility, then you deliver a kind, uh, the information in a way that is comprehensible for all future generations to understand? No, no, there is no requirement of making that comprehensible for all future generations. It depends that it's in Finnish. We have no archives with information on nuclear waste yet. But if we build archives, every future society and every future generation must maintain the information and update the language for you to understand. Can we count on continuation for thousands of generations into the future? What if people starve and suffer? What if there are wars or floods or fires? The archives have the same requirements as our interim storages, requirements we cannot guarantee. After all, this is why we are building Unkalo. The point is that the safety of the disposal and the repository is not dependent on, this, on these records. But then why is this law needed? I don't know, but the legislators, they have decided that the, the record shall be handed over to state, but it doesn't say more than that. So the idea is that the archive of today should last for a certain period, but then, by, then be renewed by yes. next generations. Yes, each, each generation should consider it. The archiving method is, uh, is uh, appropriate for, for the future. Do you think this will happen? Mm, yeah, I hope so, at least. <laughs>
Can we learn anything from the past that may help us communicate a hundred thousand years into the future? Uh, usually when we look at these time scales, we go back uh, in time. And obviously, you see, when you go 100,000 years back in the past, we come to uh, our ancestors in Africa. And we also cover, as we go along, our ancestors in, uh, in Europe in, uh, in the form of the Neanderthal uh, man. And you would have to realize that we, we have very little in common. How would you uh, make a parallel from people uh, looking after a mammoth, hunting a mammoth with spears. It is uh, difficult to explain to these people something with nuclear waste. We cannot assume that uh, people or creatures in the future will really understand very much. But is it also connected to that they might have different kind of senses that we have? Yes, senses, appearances, needs, and knowledge, uh, everything goes away. Uh, there is no one true statement that will then uh, survive. Do you basically trust the future generations We are trying to do Onkalo as independent of human nature as possible because we can't predict the, the, exactly how the humans will be will behave in the future. Yeah, it is very difficult to uh, answer that question because uh, yeah, 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 trust on, on that aspect so. so. I can say that I trust, but I cannot say that I don't trust. <laughs> it may be a complete open question whether that is um, uh, a possibility that somebody will interpret anything at all in this uh, time scale. I have to s say that uh, the quick answer is nobody knows anything at all. If we cannot rely on markers and archives, how will you know? Maybe our legends will reach you by being told over and over from generation to generation like ancient legends have reached us. Were you warned about Onkelu through legend? Did your parents tell you stories about the fire in the burial chamber deep in the bowels of the earth? The chamber you must always Remember to forget. Onkelo is our very first permanent repository for nuclear waste. But when Onkelo is sealed a century from now, it'll hold only a fraction of the waste we have. We must build many more onkelos far from earthquakes and volcanoes to keep the waste away from the surface of the earth. We must build many more secret chambers that we hope to hide from you.
reasonable to talk about a nuclear renaissance. Many people seem to think so. And many politicians believe that uh, nuclear energy is needed to curb the carbon dioxide emissions from electricity production. If we're going to take the people in, in China and in India to the same level as the Western countries uh, in the next 20 years, you have to start three new, new nuclear reactors a day. Spent fuel is considered as a material that could be reprocessed. It could be used again. We shouldn't reprocess the fuel due to the fact that, that in such a case the, the, the plutonium which is extracted in the reprocessing process could escape and be, be used for fabricating uh, bombs. Now there's been uh, research into transportation in the hope that uh, the waste could be in a way made harmless. Is that a possibility? Theoretically, yes, but in practice, probably never, it will never be able to do away with all the nuclear waste in that way. So there is no way around nuclear waste? At the moment, nobody's found any, any, any way around. If we want to use nuclear energy, then we will have nuclear waste. I'm not so sure that uh, nuclear energy is the solution. Maybe in a, in a short time, well, this is my personal view too, but um, I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, sustainable in the long run, but maybe in, for the next uh, decade, why essentially. Do, why do you think so? Because we won't have uh, enough uh, uranium. It will be just like the oil. I think we all can agree that the oil isn't a sustainable solution. And we will come there with the uranium assets too. Running out of energy sources could, uh, could lead up to very unstable conditions globally because those last three you know, uh, energy sources will be competed and it can even lead up to wars uh, between nations. The point with the permanent disposal is that it's permanent and therefore it's put there underground permanently and you never change it. We have coined the term decisions under uncertainty and that is clear in the nuclear waste issue that there are decisions under uncertainty. When you do a project like this you must state what you know, and you must state that you know what you know that you don't know, and also what you don't know that you don't know. Could you now try and address the audience, I mean the future audience, the far future audience. I, I personally have a strong uh, belief that belief that no human tr intrusion will take place ever uh, into Onkalo. But if I'm wrong... I would love to, to be able to meet you and, and to try to communicate with you. This is probably the only testimony of our time. You're now entering a repository with spent nu nuclear fuel from the 21st century. It must be stored in a safe place. This place should not be disturbed. Don't go there. It's dangerous. It's radioactive. You can't see it, you can't smell it. Don't touch anything. Go back up to the surface and take better care of our world than we did once. And you will be safe if you stay away from it. Good luck.
you have now gone deeper into the tunnel and you have reached a place where you should never have come. Down here radiation is everywhere. You do not know it, but something is happening to your body right now. It is beyond your senses. You feel nothing, you smell nothing. An invisible light is shining right through you. It is the last glow of my civilization that harvested the powers of the universe. 